is a fun little dude. For bobbleheads, their heads aren't that bobbly. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Amber on Abridged. Uh, today, I have a book haul. A really, really big one. I went to a book sale where I got to spend five bucks and fill a box full of books. I haven't gone through these. Some of them, some of these books I just threw in here for various reasons. I was like, it's five bucks for the whole box. Who cares? One of the first ones is um, Fire by George R. Stewart. I have literally no idea what this is about. It said Fire on the cover and I wanted it. Uh, this one is The Leopard um, by Lampedusa. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The cover is cool. I love big cats. You'll see that that's a theme in this box. I grabbed Sophocles, The Oedipus Cycle. I've been interested in, in classical mythology for always but I don't actually know a lot about it. Uh, another work that I've been interested in that I've only that I'm only passingly familiar with is The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Um, I read parts of it in high school and I've wanted to read it ever since and I never have read the whole thing so and I don't own a copy yet so I saw it and I grabbed it. This is pretty cool. I wasn't sure if I was gonna grab it or not but I decided that I might as well. Um, it's just a notebook, but it's really old. Um, and it's got like quotes and sort of scenes-ish for like various nature-y things. So like this quote is, um, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees from the book of Revelation. Okay, so I guess that's from the Bible. So there's kind of like a upper, cor upper left, lower right corner quotes on every page spread with just kind of like leafy looking generic whatchamahoosits. And I am a little obsessed with stationery and notebooks, so um, I just thought it was really neat. It looks like it was published or made or released in 1991. Oh man, I thought it was so much older than that. This is younger than I am. Um, but anyway, it, it was just look. It looked really neat, and I wanted it, and I have no idea what I'm gonna use it for yet. But we'll see. This one's called Gold Boy Emerald Girl by Yi Yin Li. Looks like a short story collection. I don't think I know anything else other than that. I wasn't being too picky. I know that I'm drawn to a certain type of poetry, but I, for the life of me, wouldn't be able to say what type it is. Um, but I've been wanting to explore more of that. And I grabbed a number of poetry books because... Uh, it was one of the last stops and I was running out of time. I was just kind of throwing things in the box at that point. And I was just kind of like, oh yeah, this will fit in there. Because I was running out of room. So they're all very tiny books. Um, and and so I just started grabbing poetry books. So this is Poems by Marilyn L. Taylor. A collection called Subject to Change. And this is Great Short Poems. Edited by Paul ne Negri. Kind of a little teeny tiny anthology just to kind of start sampling some more stuff. So this one is Paul Lorne's Dunbar Selected Poems. Um, I didn't actually even look at the title, I just saw that it was poems and it was unabridged, so. This is On the Death of My Father and Other Poems by David Cardian. I don't know who that is, um, but I, I really like the cover. Um, it's, it's a kind of tree, I don't know if you can see it that well um and i was intrigued because i uh, lost my father a number of years ago and i'm interested to see if there's anything in here i can particularly relate to this is the cherry orchard by anton chekhov um i think this was in with the poetry but i don't know if it is Oh, it looks like a play. Oh, it was a, with the plays. There was a number of plays over the poetry, too. and I just grabbed a number of those and threw them in there. If it was English, I threw it in here. But I also grabbed um, a couple of books that weren't in English. Um, so I grabbed these two, which are both French. Um, I grew up speaking French. I went to a French immersion school for elementary school. And um, 
after leaving and going to middle school, I never really had an opportunity to use it whatsoever. So there's a lot of conversational French that I just understand very well and can participate in, but anything more um, proficient, I'm I'm lost. So my cousin spent some time living in France and uh, is close with a French family, and so she learned French. So I was we were talking about maybe me trying to pick it back up so that we can practice with each other. And uh, I would eventually, one of my goals in life is to be able to be proficient enough in a language to read uh, in that language, which is why what I grabbed were both so tiny, because it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But uh, I used to read in French when I was younger. Granted, very, you know, children's books, but I did. So that's, um, that's a goal of mine. I grabbed, there's another Christmas book book in here somewhere I think. Okay the next one that I've got is Holidays on Ice by David Sedaris. So this is oh this is the other Christmas one and I've wanted to read David Sedaris for a while and I never had and I figured this would be a good intro. I've heard he's good and I'm pretty um that'll be cool. It'll be a fun time. This intrigued me because I saw the side of it first and reminded me of Perks of Being a Wallflower. And turns out that uh Stephen Chab Chabosky I can never tell if I'm saying his name right. Um, edited this collection of short stories by students or um, entries into some kind of writing contest and then he edited the collection into this it's called pieces and um, I love short stories and short story collections and so um, that's 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 all that took Zenzele a letter for my daughter by J Nazippo Marier I think it's about a, a mother who writes a letter to her daughter about their um, roots in Africa, even though she's moving to the United States for school. <laughs> I got the quotable wine lover. It's just a bunch of quotes about wine and I thought that would be fun. In addition to being uh, very into uh, Japan, I'm also very into Ireland. Uh, and I found this Irish language and culture little guide of sorts. And, um, and I grabbed it because again, big box. This one is called The Lilies of the Field, a timeless classic of love and faith. Um, I don't know, the, the title just kind of grabbed me and I grabbed it. <laughs> this one, one of my friends that I was there with found and handed it my way um, because I love tigers. Um, you can see my little stuffed tiger there. Um, and also my Twitter and Instagram handles. I really love tigers, guys. Um, but she saw this and she passed it to me and it's called Dance of the Tiger by Bjorn Kurten. All my little books are kind of squished in and around here. That's why I'm getting all the little ones here first. This is Elizabeth Bowen, a biography. I don't really know who this is, so, um, I guess I'll find out. Clues to Christy, an introductory guide to Miss Marple, uh, Hercule Poirot. Poirot, Tommy, and Tuppence, and all of Agatha Christie's mysteries, featuring three short stories. So it's just kind of, I guess, an intro little mini collection of sorts. I just grabbed it. This is Daisy Miller by Henry James. I also love little mini itty bitty books. Um, but I, I listened to the audiobook for this a while back, but it was a great, it was a good story, and uh, I'm glad that I have, I have a little one now. And also, I really love tiny books. This is another Agatha Christie, but writing under the name Mary Westmacott. Uh, it's called Absent in the Spring. Don't know anything about it. I just saw Agatha Christie. and I read her for the first time recently, and my sister-in-law is in love with her. And uh, everybody I know who likes her really likes her. So then the same friend who found that tiger book for me found a copy of William Goldman's The Princess Bride. Um, I already own a copy of this book, fun fact, but I have the movie cover version because I could not find a non-movie cover version and she found this and I was really excited and I grabbed it and there's also this super cool little, um, map in here that I am just all about. I love maps. I think they're so fun 
and so interesting. This is Silas Marner by George Eliot. I've never read anything by George Eliot and I've been interested in checking out some of her stuff. There's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to most of these books. Now we're getting into some of my heftier stuff. There might be some small ones mixed in yet. Um, this is In the Heart of the Sea, The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Ex Ex Essex. Um, I think this is in the nonfiction section. Mostly it was just, it sounded cool. Somebody used it as a, as a coaster. And, oh yeah, there it is. You can see the, the ring on it. Um, and that's kind of disappointing. I might try to clean that up a little bit. This is Word Myths, Debunking Linguistic Urban Legends. So it's kind of like where did common phrases and idioms and whatnot come from. <laughs> so this is Stephen Spender, uh, Journals, 1939 to 1983. I haven't the slightest idea who this is, but I really like diaries and journals, and uh, I find that just a really fascinating way to get to know somebody. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna find this out too, at some point because uh, I have their journals now. I guess this is backstory inside the business of news by Ken Auletta. It's about journalism. Um, I got a collection of John Donne poetry and prose. Again, just kind of looking for. Um, more stuff that I like. Uh, grabbed Mirror Mirror by Gregory Maguire. I've heard that he does some good stuff. I like fairy tales and he does the retellings of fairy tales. So, and I like general fairy tale retellings, though I'm not familiar with his specific versions of any of them. So, um, you know, part of a $5 box is a good way to start with that. This is The Palace Tiger by Barbara Cleverly. I grabbed it again because it says tiger and it has a tiger on the cover. Looks like it's set in India. Oh no, they might be hunting tigers. Hmm. I might get very angry reading this book. I grabbed Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding. Um, it's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I love Pride and Prejudice, so I've been kind of curious to read it. I've seen the movie. I'm not crazy about it, but I heard the book is better. And usually the book is better, so I figured I'd give it a shot. I grabbed March by Geraldine Brooks. I have another book by her that I haven't read yet. And also I really like the cover. I like keys. Um, I've got Pantheon Village series Return to a Chinese Village by Jan Myrtle. This is a book that I've been wanting to read since high school. So I think it's YA, it's LGBT, uh, YA, it's Rainbow Boys by Alex Sanchez. This is definitely Matt Bomer that's posing for that guy, whoever that's supposed to be. I love him in white collar. Oh jeez. I think this might be my fattest book that I grabbed. Um, it's called Green Dragon White Tiger. Um, it looks like it might be a little naughty. <laughs> the Soul of the Indian and Interpretation by Charles Alexander Eastman. I was in the nonfiction section first and I didn't know how much time I would need to look around the whole sale. So I just started grabbing anything that looked interesting. This is The Anatomy of a Lie, The Truth About Lies and Why Good People Tell Them by Diane M. Comp, MD. It seemed intriguing, so I grabbed it. This is called Caught in the Quiet by Rod McEwen. I really love the way that this is bound. I like the cover a lot. It looks, it just looks really neat. And I think, oh, and there's like a, a handwritten inscription on the inside and I, I love that with used books. And it is a poetry collection. This is one of the small ones that was tucked in the side. This is called Alf by Charles Eric Main. I was really intrigued by the, the cover, especially the font. I don't know, I guess something happens. I guess I'll find out. Um, the Cherokee Nation and the Trail of Tears by Theta Purdue and Michael D. Green. Sources of Chinese Tradition, Volume 2, compiled by W. M. Theodore DeBerry, uh, Wing, Wing Chan, and Chester Tan. Uh, introduction to Oriental Civilizations. Also, the cover is super cool. Um, Motherland, Writings by Irish American Women about Mothers and Daughters, edited by Caledonia Kearns. Again, kind of obsessed with Ireland a little bit. Uh, the White House on the Hill by Martin H. Borkenhagen. The true story of a young farm boy growing up in Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. I'm interested in local history and uh, wanted to grab it. <laughs> Beast of Bengal by Elaine Pinkerton. And I don't know what it's about. It's apparently fiction and there's a giant, you know, Bengals is a subspecies of tiger and 
Tigers are my jam. Trusting Soul, Collected Stories and Drawings by Brian Andreas. It's got a super cool cover, and it's poems and, like, little drawings and stuff, and it looks really neat. So I'm pretty excited to check that out. Um, Robert Frost on Writing by Elaine Berry. Um, if he's got any advice to give, I want it, because I want to write, and I love him a lot. So. Uh, the Normans and Their Myth by R.H.C. Davis. So, um, interested in mythology... Uh, folk tales, fairy tales, all that jazz into all of it. Uh, the Wild Cherry Tree by H.E. Bates. Um, I don't know anything about this. Oh, it's a short story collection. That's why I grabbed it. The last two are uh, both picture books, or like uh, coffee table books. This is Ireland Myths and Legends by Beryl Bear. And uh, introducing Kyoto... Text Herbert E. Plucho and foreword by Donald Keane. But, eh. so, Ireland, Japan, all kinds of books, so many books, so many books. Anyway, I need to go sit in front of my air conditioning. It's like nutty in here. Um, but yeah, so that was my book haul. Any thoughts? Any um, interested in buddy? If you want to buddy read anything? Uh, recommendations? Maybe not recommendations. I got a lot of stuff to work on. But, um, yeah. So, that's, that's my haul. Uh, catch you on the flip side.